We travelled to picturesque Derbyshire to see the Irish Wolfhound Charitable Trust's new mobile canine cardiology unit. This was set up to make heart screening more accessible for Irish Wolfhounds, but in the future, for other breeds too. I was really excited to meet up with cardiologist Dr Serena Brownlee, who has dedicated over three decades of her life to screening Irish Wolfhounds. It was amazing to hear her insights into heart disease in this breed, and how our understanding of it has evolved during the time she has been working with them. The first thing that was identified about Irish Wolfhounds was that as a breed they seemed to be particularly predisposed to atrial fibrillation and arrhythmia, which is very common in humans and also occurs in horses and um, is very common in dogs and particularly in giant breeds. But in many breeds of dog, atrial fibrillation is associated with congestive heart failure. Awareness among breeders is now a lot higher too, thanks to the work of people like Serena and the Irish Wolfhound Charitable Trust and there was a huge amount of support and enthusiasm from the breeders I met on the day. When your dog gets tested and it shows markers of heart disease, it's not a shameful thing, because these dogs are prone to it. You're never going to fully eradicate it. Serena has a limited time within which to perform her screening tests, which include a physical examination, an echocardiogram and an ECG. So it's fascinating to see which views and measurements she places highest value on for this breed. So basically, I measure the aortic root, the left atrial diameter, the left atrial to aortic ratio. Um, I look at left ventricular dimensions, internal diameter and diastole and systole, um, septal thickness and systole and diastole, and, and free wall thickness and systole and diastole. Dogs of this size have to be scanned standing up, and in most dogs, Dr. Brownlee is able to take all of her views from the right parasternal position. Basically able to do, in the limited time you have, mm -hmm. you're able to do everything from the right parasternal. I know you say yes. sometimes you do the apicals, but actually... You do, sometimes. You got everything you needed from the right parasternal. Pretty well. While we did see some large ventricles with impaired systolic function on the day, heart disease in these dogs is clearly a lot more nuanced and complicated than just DCM. For a wolfhound bitch, I was expecting about five, 50 millimetres, I would expect. So to me, this is still mild, but guarding me. And Dr. Brownlee is able to look at so much more than just left ventricular size and function in her screens. I talk a lot about the importance of mastering your right parasternal views before moving on to your apicals or your Dopplers. It's such an important set of views and it's the foundation upon which you build the rest of your study. The work of the Irish Wolfhound Charitable Trust in screening shows just how much information you can get from these key views. Another thing is that while Dr Brownlee quantified her work with measurements and ejection fraction calculations, rather than being the entire basis of her examination, these really just supported her prior subjective interpretation. Of course, this comes with the experience of having seen thousands of these dogs, but I think it's a good reminder for all of us of the importance of having the confidence in your ability to interpret your echocardiograms by eye, so that your measurements support your diagnosis, rather than building your diagnosis around your measurements. It was great spending time in a lovely farmhouse in beautiful surroundings and having the opportunity to talk to people so experienced in running a cardiac screening service. Overall, an amazing day seeing all of this in action and witnessing the support and appreciation of the owners of such an historic and fascinating breed. <laughs>